Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you guys are. Welcome to another episode of Watercolor Instructions. My name is Sunil. Today, we're going to do Puffin. Yes, this Puffin. This beautiful piece, under 15 minutes. Step by step, I'll go through where to start, how to finish, and what brush to use. Stick around. All right. Here I'm starting with uh, drawing. Uh, the pencil I'm using is a mechanical clutch pencil. It's a 6V. I'm just putting in volumes. So you will need to make sure that the volumes are correct before you start the details. Uh, I've got a couple of videos uh, about how to draw, how to volume, put the volume, if you guys are interested to have a look. So I'm not adding details as you look. I'm just generally doing a rough shape and then it's more angular this shape. I'm just quickly trying to compose in the center of the page and adding a little more details the detail I'm mindful every time there's a pause I'm just mentally verifying if it's the right place so once I like the shape what I'm looking at so I'm just adding a couple more reference lines so at this stage my beak doesn't look um, correct the puffin usually has uh, much curved arc I'm going back just using the eraser it's very important to make sure the drawing looks correct before you do any painting doesn't matter how good the painting quality is the technique is if the colors are not correct doesn't matter what you do it's going to look odd so you wonder when you look at many paintings you feel that something is not correct this usually because the drawing doesn't make sense uh, the artist might have a fantastic uh, perspective. So I'm doing the eyes and if you notice there's some couple of small reference lines where it connects to the beak. Uh, those are the reference points I'm trying to use. Some more, a few more shapes in the beak itself, the features of the beak, the details. And I'm carrying on just adding more and more details now that I know the volumes are correct. The composition is correct and I'm just uh, adding final touches don't hesitate to use a eraser I mean there's no uh, nobody cares how you do it as long as you do it correctly yeah I know people few people are a little more snob saying that you're not supposed to use a eraser if you're a good artist I don't buy that it's the end of the day if the painting looks really good how you do it is up to you so I'm happy with the puffin and even though it looks like the drawing is a bit more darker just I did uh, it's a little more darker for the video uh, if I was doing on my own it would be a little lighter and I'm just making the eyes a little more darker so that I can see and the camera can pick up what I'm doing so in this stage I'm starting with a yellow yellow ochre and a little mix of burnt sienna I'm not using a dryer so usually what I do is I do an area dry it and then go to the next stage at this stage I'm just starting putting the base color in the eyes and I'm moving towards the beak so I'm gonna try out a different area come back when it's dry and then I can come back so that uh, it gives a little more time to dry so the brush I'm using is a uh, Japanese calligraphy brush. Uh, it's long. It's like a mop. Uh, the thing about mop is the bristles are not too long. It doesn't give me a very sharp edge. This one is uh, best of both worlds. It holds a lot of liquid and pigment and it gives me a really pointy grip. And if you notice that smaller calligraphy brush are more like a pencil. They're very comfortable to hold and draw. So I'm switching to Indian yellow at this one. I'm still using a really small brush because the volume is not much and then I want to make sure that there's enough control and I'm not mixing the colors I'm being a little more careful not to mix the yellow and the dark blue and that one is a little bit of Persian blue and gray so I'm adding a few more details to the neck so it's a gray while being careful 
to shape the neck correctly and I'm just wetting the brush. I clean the brush, I wet the brush and I'm just dragging the paint, what you call as a gradient uh, wash. So there is a dark in the bottom and then I'm just washing it so that it smoothly transis transition in the paper. So you can't see the harsh edge of the top. I'm adding a little more color at the bottom to emphasize the color. And at this stage, the eye is a little more dry, so I'm adding in the, the outer shape. It's gray, a little bit of blue, the same colors. So you want to always try to maintain color uniformity so that it looks from the same color, unless the bird is multicolored, then you go ahead and then choose it. But again, I'm doing a small gradient wash. I'm taking out the pigment in the brush and I'm just doing a small wash. Take your time. Even though this one looks like really small, slow, the whole painting was done under 10 minutes. And this is uh, full speed or uh, it's a real speed. So I haven't fast forwarded anything. You can do uh, good paintings in 10 or 15 minutes. And if you notice that, I haven't changed brush. I was just a single brush and I'm maintaining um, all the details what I need with just a brush. So the puffin have a white collar, so a little more mindful. And then I'm picking up a lot more gray and there's a hint of Persian blue. So pick up a little more water, make it a little more loose so that it flows easily. Less pigment, so it gives you a, a gradient. And I'm picking more pigment now. Do you see the transition? So the back has less pigment. I'm controlling the water and the pigments. So I'm adding a little more pigment, making it darker in certain areas to give that 3D effect. And I'm outlining the neck and the body. I splatter a little bit. Um, I like doing it, it just makes it a little more organic. I tend to splatter a lot of my paintings. It doesn't look um, like a digital painting, uh, it adds character. Especially if you want to do dirt or add texture, splattering a little bit of color uh, adds some characters. So I'm changing, cleaning the brush, I'm picking up Burnt Sienna, that's the base color. I'm adding a little more gray to add the shadow. And yellow ochre. As you see, it has sharp edges. I'm gonna wash my brush going back. So it's got a red uh, auto rim. I'm coming back. So there's a yellow reddish cheek to the puffin. I'm not sure what it is. And I'm adding, closing the gap between the gray, bluish gray and the red. I'm adding a little more depth, making it 3D. If it's just one color, it always looks flat. So you're adding a couple more colors to make it 3D. Okay, so here I'm using a black sharpie. So to just to get a clean sharp edge, it's not a cop art or it's not a fake drawing or I'm not cheating. Anything which can get the highlights right. I usually have a black watercolor pen. I couldn't find it, so the 
Shopee will do just fine. So it's clean, you can control it and if it looks good, you're doing good. I'm adding a little more web and um, details on the leg. And that's about uh, finishing it. I'm gonna just add a couple more highlights. A little more splatter. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, there are more videos like this where I've gone through each and every step and explain how to do it. Uh, help me out if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit the like button. Till next time, keep watercoloring and bye.